Welcome back to the What's Inside podcast, where we see what's inside the minds of some of the people that I think are incredibly interesting. People that have created things, people that make things, and then also sometimes our family and the behind the scenes of our YouTube channel where we have around 7 million subscribers. And we like to detail the history and kind of share the behind the scenes stories. One of the things that I've done with this is we've been able to interview some of the employees at What's Inside that have been here for a long time. And so um, today's special guest is another one of the What's Inside employees. And it's in fact, the very first employee that we ever hired. And so this is Jason Sherman. He is our editor, full-time editor. He's been editing for many years. And he's done some amazing work. So today I want to talk about some of the funny stories behind the scenes of making videos, some of the favorite videos that, he, that we've made, some of the humor that we put into these things, and then, and then also just some tips for people that want to become YouTubers or want to become YouTube editors. Like, what are some things you can do? What do you want to look for in that? So, all right, with that introduction, Jason, welcome to our studio for the first time Hi. ever. <laughs> and it's, I think it's important to say this, like, you don't even live here. You live like five hours away. We flew you in today just for this. How does that work? Is it okay being remote, but being an editor, like a full-time employee? I personally love it. I think it works perfectly for, for being an editor. Um, I mean, I have to just shut my door and just work all day long and it not having distractions or anything of an office or anything like that. Yeah. has worked perfectly for me over the years. I mean, if you look back to when you first started, um, you lived 25 minutes away from us. I lived in Washington. You did live in I Washington. <laughs> okay, very, very first started. Lived in Washington. And then even when you moved to Utah, I was like, great, you're coming here. We got a fancy office. You still didn't yeah. come into the office. Yeah. You still just like worked from your house, from a cabin in the middle of a canyon. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> I want to talk a little bit about your background first, just to like for some credibility for what things you've done before you became like the What's Inside editor. But which, by the way, do you know when what day you started with What's Inside? Whatever day the marshmallow video was posted. Let's just go <laughs> with that. <laughs> okay, marshmallow video. That's a good question. So if anybody's seen it, we actually have it here in our studio. It's the marshmallows. The DJ he has a helmet. We cut open his helmet. I went and met Marshmallow and did this thing, but. Um, but Jason, I did a, an ad on a th place called KSL. It's like the local newspaper and their classifieds are pretty big. And I'm like, I need an editor. And Jason reached out. He's like, I have some experience. I've been editing for a church up here in Washington, but we're going to have a baby and we're going to be moving down to Ogden. Um, and so yeah. I was like, here's your test. How about this? It was like last minute. Marshmallow started taking off. He did a, a collaboration with Lele Pons and a, another YouTuber. And one of his newer songs took off. And I'm like, we got to get this video out quick. And I don't have time to edit it. So how about this? And so I sent it to him at like 8 PM. Here's the Google drive file folder. Let's do a test on this. And I woke up in the morning. It was like 6 AM, 7 AM. And there's the video. I watch it one time and I'm like, this is amazing. I can't believe that he just made this in such a short amount of time. I don't even know what these graphics things that are on here. There's like an M that was I went like... a little overboard with the graphics on that one. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out. Um, I'm going to pull it up right now. What's inside marshmallow. I'm just gonna do what's inside marshmallow and see what it is. Okay, four years ago, it's 26 million views. 26 million views. Yeah, I think it's in the top five on, Dang. on the channel. Yeah. January 11th, 2017. So we're definitely over four years, over four years now. And yeah, you did some cool things with the graphics. Um, I kind of had it in mind that I would, I would like, I just sat there like, okay, we always shared behind the scenes. This is me talking more than Jason here, but <laughs> sorry, buddy. Um, but basically like the behind the scenes for the what's inside the marshmallow helmet was I wanted to do dead mouse, which is like a huge DJ. And he has like the Mickey mouse looking head that Disney sued him multiple times and he didn't, it didn't go through at all. But mm -hmm. anyway, so I thought he's big Do what's inside of his helmet. He had multiple helmets. So I reached out to my friend who is kind of big in the EDM space, like electronic dance music. And I'm like, Hey, do you have ties to dead mouse? And he's like, no, but there's this guy that is up and coming. He's big time. I help manage him. His name's marshmallow. And I Googled him and I'm like, I see the helmet. I'm like, yes, that is perfect. Let's do this. And he really wasn't big. Like he definitely was not mainstream like he is now. And so he's like, come to South Carolina or to USC. And we've got this concert. You can come down. So they said, come in at nine. He's going to, the show starts at nine. So I'm there at like eight 30 waiting outside. Finally at like nine o'clock, they come get me. And I'm thinking the show starts at nine, like marshmallow. 
it's going to need to get out there. And I got to film a segment with him. So we go into the green room. It's him with his helmet off. Like he's just hanging out. And, and I thought it was funny because I'm like, I'm like in a hurry and I'm, he's like, Oh, how's it going? Super chill. Really nice guy. And instead of, uh, instead of like taking time to hang out and stuff, I'm like, okay, let's go in the other room. We went to a different green room and I'm like, here's the idea. I'm going to take this helmet. You're going to give it to me. And then I'm going to film my process of me going back home. And, and then I'll go to Lincoln cause he couldn't be here today. And he's probably like, I don't know who Lincoln is, whatever. I'm like, it's my son. So anyway, he's like, okay, I'm down. So we filmed that take twice with two camera angles and it was kind of awkward, weird. And then we went out and I just started filming like time lapses of me running around at the concert in the marshmallow helmet, wearing white clothes. And people would look at me cause I was backstage. I had like this backstage pass and they'd like, look at me and be like, Oh, this guy must be marshmallows. And they were like really awkward about it. Cause they're like, we have a backstage pass. Do we talk to marshmallow or not? I wasn't marshmallow. It's like the cheap version of marshmallow. And then, uh, and then, but turns out the show didn't even start till like midnight. And so like it's midnight and and he goes on and I watch for like 20 minutes and film him on stage. And at that point, my flight is at 6 a.m. I'm like, I'm kind of done. I'm done being in this college scene. I'm just this old dad that doesn't belong here. And so um, I went up to Mo Shalizi, who's like his manager. And I was like, hey, Mo, here's my backstage pass. Thank you so much. And he's like, don't you want to stick around for the whole show? I'm like, no, I'm good. I got all the footage I need. And what he wanted to do, and he told me, he's like, if you wait until like 2.30 or 3.00, we can get you out on stage with marshmallow and like we can turn the camera back and get a video and picture with the whole crowd behind. Oh, wow. I didn't know that. Yeah. So wow. I could have like been there with marshmallow on stage with them behind me. And I was like, I'm good. I got all the footage I need. I'm out of here. And like, people were like doing drugs. And it was like this weird scene that I'm just like, ah, I'm just this dad. I don't know. I don't fit. I don't fit in this crowd. And it was just a bunch of college kids. So I'm like, I'm good. I got the footage. Yeah. So I left. It was like five months later. I hadn't even published the video. I think Marshmallow's team, they actually told me they thought that I was, I was just didn't, because I left early, never published the video. They were oh. thinking that I just like didn't like Marshmallow and I just killed the video and wanted to just get backstage passes for some reason. <laughs> so finally, I'm like, this is the time. Marshmallow just did a video with another YouTuber with another good song. We did the old song, the alone song. I gave you all that footage that night. We hurried and filmed like the cutting up one of the helmet within like two hours that day, like five months later. Mm -hmm. And then, and then, yeah, then the video took off. And what I think was cool about that is that the video did so well, like Marshmallow's team loved it. Um, the, the music world loved it. People that didn't know about electronic dance music, they didn't know about Marshmallow, like families, dads, kids. Mm -hmm. They're like, this guy's cool. And the, the song, the way that you edited it with all my footage of me traveling, that alone song was so cool that all these people went and downloaded it. And it and the video took off. Um, Billboard did an article on that, on the video. Wow. Like the actual Billboard magazine or music or whatever. I didn't know that. And then that, it, that song had been out for a year and it was off the charts. It wasn't on the charts anywhere. That week... It went up to like number 35 in the world of the most downloaded song. Wow. That week, a year after the song had been out. Huh. And yes, Marshmello was getting more no notoriety because of Lele Pons, but that was like his new song. And maybe more people were discovering him. But I have to believe that the video edit, the video that we did, just and all this new type of audience that's not even in the video. I'm like, he does EDM music. And this is where you do like, like dance music. <laughs> And now it's like you say marshmallow and they don't think of EDM. It's just like mainstream. He does videos with, it's just music you hear on the top 40 hits all yeah. the time. So anyway, I know I'm at the podcast is with you at interview, but I, I don't know. I thought I should share like the behind the scenes of that whole marshmallow thing, but you were a big part of that, like editing yeah. that video. Marshmallow, you're welcome. <laughs> so tell me about what you did before you came to what's inside. Cause I, I feel like I know a little bit, but I don't know much about it. All I know is you're in Washington and you worked for some church. Yes, so I was the the video editor for all their like sermon intros and stuff before they do a do a sermon and then like any like outreach videos from the community like interviewing people and stuff like that like you know homeless mission people talking and stuff like that. But, Would you film it too, or you just yeah edit the whole thing? filming film filming edit. and editing? Yeah, that's a lot. Yeah. How, so how long did you do that? I was there. We were in Washington for two years, um, and then before that. Um, we were in Ogden and I had our little kind of company called burning tree that we just did like local, um, business videos and stuff like that. But I really cut my chops at, um, a place called Thomas arts. Hmm. Um, it's a, 
if they're in Farmington, I don't know if you've heard of them. They're, heard of them no. they're like one of the biggest marketing companies in, in Utah. Um, they won several awards and stuff, but I was just like a, like a lowly editor there. I started as an intern and eventually got offered a job and I worked there for a couple of years and hmm. learned that was like college for me. Cause I went to college for English. Oh, okay. creative writing and no I, no even not even a degree <laughs> in editing <laughs> no no i minored in business multimedia but i've just been editing for years and i think the first time i edited was when i was like 13 and i found windows movie maker on my parents computer mm. and was just like oh what is this and just played around with it taught myself everything and and yeah that's that's my background in editing. <laughs> I think it's interesting because a lot of people think that to be a YouTuber or to be like a YouTube editor, like you have to have some big background and like have go to school. School isn't the worst thing. Like I'm sure you learn good things there. Or something. Yeah. But if you go to school, like even at the school I went to UVSC, which is now UVU, um, they, I think they have a four year degree or maybe it's two year, but it's like a four year degree in actual editing. But it covers so many areas. It's like big budget production. Like, Hey, you're going to film, you're going to go film top gun or hmm. avatar or something like you need to learn how to do this. You need a lighting and all the different settings for your camera. It's like all of these huge production. Like what if it's like when you're a focus puller, like all of these things that for YouTube, maybe it would help, but in a way it almost hurts you a little bit. I feel like, yeah, I, f I think that's, I think that's true. Like I, I kind of like the, um, low budget kind of feel and like you can just experiment with YouTube videos. That's what I that's what I really enjoy about editing for you is like I can just have fun. It's like a puzzle. Like every new video is like a puzzle that I get and I just get to have fun and create something fun with it and use after effects for whatever I think would be cool or whatever yeah. I have time for. <laughs> so a little different editing than editing for the church. Yeah. Yeah. A little <laughs> bit different. Yeah. Yeah. There's and, some of the best YouTubers out there that I've seen their editors. Like I, I've brought them up before, but like Logan Paul has such a good editor and he started a YouTube channel where he shows behind the scenes of like his storytelling. And I love it. One time he was with, with Logan and he's like, let me show you this joke. And he like shows a joke. He's like, do you know why that joke worked? And Logan's like, yeah, cause it's funny. And he's like, mm, yeah, it was a good joke, but it's because of the rhythm and the timing and this and that, and the way that I did this. And he breaks through hmm. his edit and how he came up with the timing for the joke to hit and the things that he cut out and the things he left in and why that joke hit so well. And then when he moved on from it and Logan is like, Logan was kind of sarcastic, like, oh, you're gonna take credit for my joke. I'm the <laughs> one that did the joke. But in reality, like the edit is such a big part of YouTube. And I've had some people that have tried to edit for us that have like a professional background of just like been to school and everything. And it's just so boring. Mm. And so a big part of it, I feel like is you have a really good sense of humor. <laughs> and some of the videos that the first one that I can think of where, um, you know, Zach, Jerry rig, everything. He's, he's a good friend. We've done some videos with him. And I remember when I, we went up to Canada to do a video with the AB family and it was what's inside pie face. It's like that game where you turn the knob and sometimes yeah. it hits you. Sometimes it doesn't. And you came out with this like Jerry rig approved Jerry meter. Oh, it was yeah. a Jerry, the Jerry meter. meter. Yeah. Get it in there and pop it out. Oh. His face would pop up and his face would like, and every, every time I'm like, I'm going to use a screwdriver, it'd be like really high on the Jerry meter. And then when I was like getting the hatchet, it's like negative, negative fail. And then that just kind of became this theme. Like you would have videos whenever I'd pull out a screwdriver, you'd see Zach's head like pop up in the corner. Yeah. I get excited. Oh, he's going to actually take something apart properly instead of smashing it. Yep. Yeah. And so like little things like that, it's just like YouTube humor that they're not going to teach that in school, like how to have a sense of humor. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta just come up with creative things like that. Yeah. How many videos do you think we've popped Zach's face into? Yeah, probably more than 50, I would say, but I don't know. I, it just kind of, whenever I feel like putting him in there, I remember to, you know, are there any moments that you've put in that nobody's ever caught? Yes. There's a couple. <laughs> <laughs> like what kind of things? I remember we did the, um, when we were doing the, uh, Airbnb once and you stayed in the water tower house. I got okay. really intricate for some reason with like a, like a secret. Um, like there's some little moments in there where that you can see like a little bit of text and like it, it tells you, I, I can't even remember what we were doing with that. Do you remember? I don't remember it. No. Yeah. There's oh. like, there's like, if you, if you see this text, then like type this comment and then 
we'll pin your comment or something like that. And no one ever found it. (laughs) (laughs) It was just like one frame of like a moving shot that you could see it. And I don't even remember where it was. But. Okay, so we're going to have to go back and watch this video. If you're listening to this podcast, go back and watch <laughs> what's inside a water tower. We were in Southern California, stayed in this Airbnb that's like a water tower. And find that moment. I'm going to have to go search and see. Maybe somebody's got it by now. We Maybe. just haven't searched the Maybe. comments. I haven't been monitoring it. so Because <laughs> there, there are times when you'll just one frame, literally one frame, you'll put a picture or something weird in there. That's what's fun about YouTube is because, you know, people can just pause it and the internet will find things. (laughs) (laughs) Let's talk about a project that I think was pretty cool. Like we did a kind of a partnership with Google and they gave us a VR 180 camera. So it's like a hundred and it's like VR experience, except for it's only half of it. It's 180 because three R VR 360 is kind of, to me, it's not as enjoyable to watch because you're wearing this headset and you're like turning, if there's things going on around all around you and you're going to miss half of it or mm-hmm. more because things are going on behind you. So I like this concept of the VR 180 where it's just in front of you, like what you can see as you're turning. And so we did three or four videos with them. First, we tested out with an exploding fire extinguisher ball and we lit that thing on fire. It exploded. It scared you to death. It was really <laughs> yeah. funny. You were terrified. That was with their prototype camera. It was their prototype. Yeah. It looked like a robot. Mm-hmm. And then we got the legit one and um, we went and did what's inside the Washington monument and went to the top of it before it reopened after it had been closed for like two and a half years or something like that. That was special. That was cool. So, so I don't know. Tell me about your experience, like going on the trips and filming and how's that different from like you just editing the videos when we send them. It's a lot more work (laughs) to to go on the trips and to film things. Um, but I, I don't know. It's fun too. It's like an adventure going off and and filming things and learning that new camera was crazy too. Cause you got to send me to England Got to see oh, my I cousin. forgot about yeah. that. Yes, Google is like, we'll offer you some money if you want to send one of your employees or if you want to go yourself to England to be, get trained. Yeah. And you were all about it. You're like, I'll go. Yeah. Yeah, it was awesome. Yeah. And got to see my cousin and hang out with my brother because he, he lives in Georgia. So he flew Georgia, out the, the country. country yes. Not Georgia, the state. I didn't know that existed until you started working for us. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Georgia, the country. It's a wonderful place. You should visit. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, learning that camera was another beast because each lens, because there's a, a lens for this eye and a lens for this eye, and each one is like a 4K image. So you have, you're editing this 8K video together and you have to use this like injection software to get YouTube to recognize it. And it was, it was fun learning it, but it's kind of, I don't know. It's like a, it's like a very niche kind of video. I don't think the audience really liked those. You know, we didn't really much. get the best feedback. Like I wouldn't say, well, there were some negative ones on some of the ones we did, like the chainsaw and the vending machine. Those ones I didn't like as much. The VR, the Washington monument, I think we got pretty positive comments and that one's continued to do well to where, I think schools are showing that and it's like from an educational side of things, it's such a great way to see something. And that one worked out really well. And so just like with a lot of technology, I think there's a place for, for it and there's a place where it's not as good. And Mm -hmm. so if you have like a really immersive, really cool place, that's educational, especially once COVID hit and everybody is like stuck at home doing online learning, not in Utah, but like California, this whole time they've been online learning. Um, it's nice for teachers to be able to say, Hey, we're going to learn about the Washington monument today or something in DC. You go watch this video. If you have VR headset, that would be great. If not, you can move your phone and see some of it. And we've gotten some comments on that, how that's been really good. Most people do just use their phone and pan around to look at the video. But if you can use a 3d headset, like it feels like you're there with the, with the camera. Cause there's an, there's a camera for each eye and everything's 3d. You can see how tall Dan is standing right next <laughs> to you. It's, it's really, it's a cool effect. And I, I think that now that VR is kind of popping a bit more, um, people will start to yeah. kind of move into that space, but it is, it's a big deal to put your phone into a headset and strap it to your head and make sure you're on the video and make sure it's at the highest quality settings. Cause if it's not, it'll look all Grainy. chunky. Yeah. yeah. I mean, you had to get a full on, it almost burned up your old computer. Like, yeah. <laughs> like we had to get a new graphics card. Basically Jason had to get a brand new computer that could keep up to date with the VR thing. Yes. Thank you. Which, oh yeah. No, thanks to Google for helping us with that. No, because I, there's no way I could have edited that and figured it out. That's before I even went to that project before I even said yes. I'm like, Jason, you have to be committed to doing this. If you don't want to do it and you don't want to film it and edit it, I'm going to say no to this project. <laughs> but if you're down doing that, then let's go on with this. No, so I it think was that awesome. was good. Yeah. The one side note, like behind the scenes that people may not see in the video, and you kind of hear it at the end. But as we finished up, we were like in this secure area the whole day. Nobody's there. 
as we finish, we're still rolling. We just did the outro. Mm -hmm. And then these guys are like, hey, Dan, Lincoln. Yeah, yeah. And we go over and it's like two random people on the chain link fence, which is weird. There's not that many people around. And they recognized us. Uh -huh, yeah. And do you remember where they were from? Georgia. Yeah. They're from Georgia, <laughs> the country, like the place you visited, the yeah. place where your brother lives. Out of, in D.C., two people from Georgia that are fans of what's inside <laughs> yeah. that just happened to see us. So random. This That's life awesome. is so interesting with YouTube <laughs> stuff. I don't get it. Okay, so we've done... Have you been part of any, any of our gold play button videos or silver play button videos? I, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I'm trying to think. You did the, the one where we did... Where we, where we did the PewDiePie Award. Mm -hmm. You edited that one. It's like the one where we went to Baccarat, France. Yeah, that was awesome. Casey Neistat, when we smashed his diamond, cut his diamond in half. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I don't know about the gold or anything, but anyway. I've just so got him on the wall, which is cool, but YouTube sent me this recently, which I thought was pretty cool. I didn't know if you know this, but they do like a letter. Check this out. They do, they, they send you a letter where it's like, you're bigger than this place you're bigger than that and they took the letter and they made it on gold Whoa. so it looks like it's like this cool gold letter and so anyway jason's opening it right now it's like super shiny for letter from susan and it's like you're bigger than vancouver you're bigger than venice you're even bigger than las vegas um wow one million subscribers and you've seen the different play buttons like there's that You've seen, this is the one, we have it on the wall, but like this is the one that's like the What's Inside Family gold play button. That's cool. And so I reached out to YouTube and I'm like, hey, I'd like some extras. What's Inside Family? So I bought some extras and Jason, this is a gift to you. Whoa. You can take this home with you. <laughs> really? YouTube gold play button. That's awesome. I got it just for you. So Lincoln and I got it for you. So What's Inside Family. Thank the, you. And like the, the, the main channel. Look at that. And the family channel would not be where it is without you editing so many videos. So I'm like, I've got to get you a gold play button that you can put in your house somewhere. Thanks, man. That's awesome. I'm, that's going to my office. <laughs> <laughs> Perfect. That's and so you can cool. have the letter too. So. Oh, that's amazing. And side wow. note, that's the whole reason why we set up the podcast so that I could get you this. -uh. Gold play button. Yes. So. <laughs> so did you interview Matt? <laughs> I did interview Matt. I did interview Matt. And then Stephen and Hunter, I didn't do the podcast because we ran out of time, what? but I did surprise them. That's so cool. And even more fun, after this, you get to edit the video of surprising my employees with gold play buttons. Whoa, awesome. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> that's so cool. But yeah, I'm like, what a cool gift. Nobody gets gold play buttons. No. And except for like the YouTuber, you get one free one from YouTube when you hit those milestones. Wow. But corporations, like big corporations, they have multiple employees like NBC or whoever, and they get they hit a million on, on YouTube and maybe they have five different offices where they want to display this. So YouTube will let you through Society Awards, people that we've done videos with, they'll let you purchase an extra one. That's so or cool. Or multiple. And then you can put them in your offices. And what I'm like, a cool well, idea. I want them for my employees that have like been a huge part of even hitting a million subscribers. <laughs> Thank you. That's so awesome. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what to say. That's so cool. What do you think your wife's going to say when you put up a YouTube gold play button at your house? Oh, she's going to love, well, she doesn't come down to my office very often, but. <laughs> it's like the, the back cave. Yeah. Yeah, it I is the back cave. The, the walls are literally black in my office. <laughs> really? Yeah. Do you, do you wear headphones when you edit? I do, yeah. You just like throw Most on headphones. You've got like dark lights in there, or it's not even Just bright. my screens. So I have like a, a floor chair that leans way far back, and then I have my screen, No. my main screen right here. Like a yeah. race car setup, like video game race car setup. Yeah, so the weight isn't over my spine, because I'm sitting there for hours, you know. So, so I you... like to be back like this, and my, neck, my head is supported. Oh, you can't hear you on that. Yeah. <laughs> my head is supported. I'm leaning back, and yeah. It's oh, good. Okay, <laughs> so you got you're laying back in your chair. You've got is it three monitors, or two yeah. or one? Three monitors, yeah. Just, and you're just one looking big up 4K at screen, and then two little ones just for like, you know, internet browser. And then I have my security cameras on another one. <laughs> so your security cameras like watching your back. My uh, my front yard or my backyard, yeah. <laughs> so I can like watch Lucas while he's playing outside and stuff. <laughs> okay, I didn't know this. This is new. Yeah, <laughs> that's pretty. That's pretty fun. The Bat Cave, the mm -hmm. editing Bat Cave. I feel like I need to see this. Would you ever go down to the Bat Cave and like watch a movie on your 4K monitor, laying in your comfortable chair? Mm, no, not usually. I mean, so when I'm editing, like uh, just a vlog or something. I can only be doing that, you know, but if I'm like animating something or like, you know, color correcting or anything like that, I can have like a YouTube video going or a movie or something yeah. that I just like kind of pausing and playing whenever I have a render bar to watch or something. Yeah. But 
Yeah, I wouldn't. I wouldn't watch you wouldn't a whole specifically movie. Specifically, go down there just say I'm going to go watch a movie. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds comfortable to me. I kind of want that set up now. <laughs> it's like you you lock in and push a button, the seat goes down. No, it's not that fancy. <laughs> it's not like that Linus Tech Tips chair that they <laughs> they came up with. <laughs> okay, speaking of Linus Tech Tips, you love Linus Tech Tips. Yeah, you'll watch him make a computer out of anything. I people love that stuff. What is it? I, I, Linus is such a nice guy. Like we've spent a few, we've been together a few times, but hmm. tell me some of the YouTube channels that you take inspiration from, because I think that's a big part of YouTube. Like I take inspiration from watching other YouTubers and the way that I film videos and the ideas that I come up with. And it's not like necessarily like I'm going to copy this YouTuber. It's more of like, I love this idea or the way that they do this. I want to enhance my video production by having more B-roll shots or this or that. I would say for you, it's like the humor. Maybe a lot of it's just your own sense of humor, but I've, what channels do you take inspiration from that you watch personally yourself? I, yeah, like you said, I love Linus Tech Tips. They they've got a lot of a lot of really good humor, and they yeah. they kind of the reverent. It's kind of irreverent, you know, compared to broadcast cable news, and um, they, they've really got that. Well, that he likes, down doesn't one. he yeah. sell like underwear? Yeah, and he's yeah. like the model for it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. He's so funny. <laughs> And then he just wears like sandals all the time. It's really weird. <laughs> yeah. It seems like a fun place to work, but, um, for, for inspiration, um, I mean, you, your channel is so unique that it's, it's kind of, um, it's, it's like the, the footage that I get, I just kind of make the best puzzle that I can out of that video yeah. and watch it back multiple times until I like it, you know? Um, but there's some other channels like, uh, Melody Sheep. Have you heard of mm-hmm. him? You know, he's, he makes these really cool space videos. Um, and then, uh, gosh, so many. <laughs> like, what do you just watch when you're just like, I want to be entertained. I'm going to watch some YouTube. Usually videos. like long form podcasts stuff, just like philosophy <laughs> videos, to be honest. <laughs> Deep mental. Well, yeah. You do have an Eng- English degree. So yeah. yeah. You got to listen. You're not listening to like Joe Rogan's podcast and not, he's not on YouTube anymore. So <laughs> <laughs> that's true. And you he, don't have Spotify. I do. Do I did install Spotify to listen to Joe Rogan, but I don't use it very much. <laughs> Not nearly as much as I did when it was on YouTube. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Joe Rogan's funny. Yeah, I love seeing it. When, I remember listening to Joe Rogan and interview Elon Musk for the first time. That's that's the one I installed the app for. Actually, no, the second time you the second time. Yeah. yeah, the first one I remember because I was in Northern Ireland uh, speaking at a conference. Lincoln was flying in by himself, and I had to meet him in Dublin, which is like a two and a half hour bus ride from Northern Ireland. So I just took the bus down. It was like daytime, hmm. but it was super late in LA when they were filming that. And that was when he like smoked pot on yeah. it. Like <laughs> the, all the memes came from that. And just, it was so funny and insightful. Like just seeing the way that he thinks and processes. Yeah. So. yeah it's, I mean, you can see a r- person for who they really are on a long form podcast. Yeah. And that's why it's so interesting to see Elon Musk just talking, you know, you don't get that from an interview. Right. You just get sound bites from the news. Mm-hmm. One thing that I regret turning down, and I think you were, I think I told you about this afterward and you were like disappointed that I turned it down. And the more that I've learned about this person, I didn't even know about this person existed. I feel bad. So I was supposed to go out and do basically a, be on a podcast for these guys that were super smart in New York. Google was setting it up. And it, I was supposed to be out there with Bill Nye. I was going to interview Bill Nye. And I'm hmm. like, that's cool. Bill Nye, the science guy. Like, that's that guy's iconic that's great and then like the two days before i flew out they messaged me and said unfortunately bill can't go so we'd still love to have you out there for this space podcast or whatever but um unfortunately you can't go and i was like i i kind of had some like other things coming up that i was kind of relieved in a way like Hmm. and i'm like if bill's bill nye's not going to be there like it's not worth it to me and i had this other thing i wanted to film or do or something at home so i'm like okay well thanks guys but i don't think it's going to be worth the time and I've got a couple other things so I'm gonna have to back out but thanks for thinking of me and then they and so they I canceled the flights and then they messaged me back and said good news we have a new person that will be on the podcast interviewing you and be with you and it's Neil deGrasse Tyson <laughs> and I'm like I had no idea who he was oh really and I was like <laughs> uh, I'm like oh cool I looked him up really quick I'm like he looks cool but I'm like I, I kind of want to do the thing that I'm here and I don't really know if so I'm like that's okay. Thanks. I've already made some other plans, but thank you. <laughs> and then I've always, then I saw Neil deGrasse Tyson at, at JFK at the airport one time. He was like sitting next to me. Oh, he wow. got a phone call and he like stood up and he was talking to this person and he sounded really smart as he was talking to him. And then, uh, 
And then Zach, Jerry, everything like he loves Neil deGrasse Tyson is talking to him. MKBHD interviews him. And this guy <laughs> is like a mad genius, especially when it comes to space and about life and all of these. He has such a unique perspective on things. And I'm like, yeah, I'm a dummy. I should have gone and talked to him, <laughs> even though he would have been like, you are a dummy. And why are you? Spe- why am I interviewing you? <laughs> it would have been like, but um, yeah, Neil deGrasse Tyson, super smart. Probably yeah, should have done that. Well, you know. Do you ever listen to that guy? I do. Yeah, he's got a cool Netflix show, I think, about mm. space. But yeah. <laughs> so what's uh, what's one of your favorite videos other than the marshmallow one? I guess that you've. I guess that wasn't your favorite. That was your first. What's your fav- One of your favorite videos or moments or things that you've done that you've edited with what's inside? Well, the I, th- I love the national park ones. Those are ones are special, like because it's such cool behind the scenes access that most people don't get to see and then i get to see all like the you know the b-roll and stuff like that you don't get to see you get to see the best parts of it but. <laughs> <laughs> stuff that fits the storyline the best yeah 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 like those the, are... the mount rushmore is probably my favorite one at this point yeah uh, i can't believe you got to go so on top cool. of the heads yeah that one was ridiculous and the behind the scenes of that one were pretty insane mm-hmm. actually the behind the scenes for the lincoln memorial i don't know what i'm going to get into in this podcast but there's some pretty crazy stories with the secretary of the interior. Oh man, I, I probably should never get into it. There's like certain <laughs> stories that I should probably not share because it was really kind of them to let us go out there, but we didn't have the best experience on that first one. And then this other one, we had to like, they weren't going to let us on top of the heads for this one. It was yeah. not happening. And you know, I had to call into DC and go above the head of, go above the heads of the head of security there. Yeah. Yeah. And I'm like, oh, and he was mad. <laughs> he was not happy. It was so awkward, but it was the right thing to do. I'm like, we got to get the shot and I know it's possible. So anyway, and now there's different people that are in charge. So it was another one of those things where it's like, let's do this now because as soon as the new administration comes on board, they will nominate and have new people that are in power and mm-hmm. we won't have the same opportunities. So yeah, that was fun. Those national park ones were really fun. One of the things that I asked Matt when he was here the other day is he's done a lot of, he's done some editing. He's done like a lot of social media and he didn't do nothing about it before. And I asked Matt, like, what are some tips? I'm going to ask you the same, pretty much the same question. Like, what are your tips for somebody that wants to get into YouTube, whether it's an editor or somebody that wants to become a YouTuber? What are some tips you have for them to be successful? Well, if you wanted to be an editor specifically, and I would say like find your favorite channels and maybe request some footage from them like you did for me and just say, Hey, I'll edit a video for you for free and try to match the style and flip it around as fast as possible. Cause I mean, they have, I mean, as you know, you got mountains of footage to send to people, but they just need edited. Yeah. And, um, I mean, if you want to, if you're looking into being an editor full time, it's it's kind of a mindset that you have to be okay with being um being just at your computer for hours that's a lot (laughs) yeah and for me it's like i work best when i can just be undisturbed for six or seven hours at a time you know like if if i keep keep having interruptions i tell my wife it's like a cruise ship like (laughs) like it takes a lot of energy to get a cruise ship going in a direction and if you want (laughs) if you want me to turn right and go to the grocery store it's going to take a lot of steam out of me you know you know what i mean so it's like i can i can do a lot more in one six hour just crunch session than like in two days of on and off like it it just doesn't make sense to work for half an hour and then stop you know and go back and forth i'm totally with you on that like it got to the point i've edited a lot of videos in the past for our channel before you came on board Mm -hmm. and a few since but not as many but it was funny because I would sit on footage that I loved. I know it was going to be really good, but it got to the point where I'd be like, I'm not going to do it today. Because mm-hmm. I know once I sit down and I get started, I don't want to stop mm-hmm. because I actually get into it. And like the little things, the little jokes, the little moments that nobody notices that I think are hilarious. Yeah. That maybe everybody's not going to notice, but I'm really proud of that edit, that time lapse, that that um, montage to music and stuff. Like I get, you get really proud of this little piece of art that you made, but if it's for me it's just getting started but once i get mm-hmm. started it's like you're right don't distract me let me just go through it 
finish the whole video. I'm going to do it in one night. Yep. yep. And there it is. It's your best thing. That's how I did uh, papers in college too. And I think that's why I got an English degree because I would just procrastinate up until the night before it was due and then write (laughs) a 10 page paper like until three in the morning and I'd get an A on it, you know? I think that's pretty much everybody in the world. If you're going to procrastinate, it's just maybe not everybody would get an A like you. (laughs) But yeah, that's totally me at school and a lot of things. It's a hard mindset to break. Um, But yeah, I mean, when it's your full-time job, you just do editing. I think it's been pretty cool because a lot of companies, like if you worked for like Vice Media or NBC or something, it'd be like, all right, nine to five, you are here editing and maybe other things. You work hard. I don't want to discount that at all. But I do like that there is some flexibility where you do get to be with your family. Oh, yeah. yeah. Spend time. Get your mind off of sitting in that chair (laughs) and actually like spend time with your kids and and do stuff. So um, that's one thing I've tried to be, be conscious of. It's just like. Yeah, sometimes it's like weekend. Here we go. We got this brand deal. We got to get it to him by Monday. Sorry, it's yeah. Friday night. Go. <laughs> those, I mean, I, those crunch sessions are, are, you know, I kind of look forward to them in a way because it's like, okay, I get to edit for the next 10 hours or whatever. Yeah. And fast turnaround. But um, I mean, that's kind of, that was every day when I was working at the ad agency, you know, and um yeah, it's 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 good being an editor. <laughs> it is. So yeah. w- now you're on the other side. What tips do you see for YouTubers? Um, what things can they do well? Or like maybe what have you learned from things that I do behind the camera or process side of things that work well that maybe other people could could try to do? Um, I mean, you're you're so comfortable on the camera now. I mean, it, when I when I first started, I remember you you would get a little bit more kind of self-conscious talking to the camera and yeah. you would you would restart an entire take <laughs> when you messed up one word you know but right. but now you know like you, you can just kind of chop do a jump cut and go back a sentence rather than going back to the beginning of the paragraph you know what i mean yeah and that speeds things up a lot and um yeah sorry what was <laughs> no, that's all right that's funny because i was filming up at Carl Medlock's shop with all of his Tesla Roadsters. Uh-huh. And he filmed me filming myself, but he filmed me with his phone and sent it to his friend that works for CNET, I think. Mm-hmm. I think it's CNET, somebody that does a lot of videos with them. And this guy watched it and he's like, whoa, that guy is like a, he's like a one man crew out there. Like yeah. Usually you've got somebody with the script, you've got somebody with the production, the camera, with the lighting, with all of these things. And you could tell that that guy, he's working on the edit while he's filming like mm-hmm. he he would catch himself saying something wrong or he's saying something he didn't like he would go back just a little bit and restart that sentence mm-hmm. it's like he's doing the edit in his head yeah and i was and i'm like oh, that was just like a few months that's ago. a good way to describe it yeah and so now i've like gone and watched it and i'm like okay that's been like an acquired thing mm-hmm. that i learned over time i don't even notice i do it a lot of times I just know that I said something that just, isn't going to work and I just bounce back. And you're really good at it too. <laughs> it's yeah. really funny. It's kind of a, it's a skill. Like it's a, I don't know if you can learn that kind of skill. <laughs> yeah. It's like a magic sauce that you have or something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't <laughs> know what that is or where it came from, but I guess that's what I do. Um, I, one of the things I like about our process is the way that it's kind of a unique thing. Like, cause a lot of people you would get like a full on script or storyboard. Mm-hmm. This is what you need to do. I basically just upload all the footage and I'm like, here's the video. Sometimes I'll be like, Hey, we have these moments and this and that. But yeah. most of the time it's like, here's the video, Jason. And you just wa- have to watch all the footage to see what this it's is a even puzzle. about. It's a puzzle. It's a puzzle. Yeah. And then you got to put it together and like, how can I make this good? Mm-hmm. So that's, I don't know. It's a tricky process. I often wonder if it would be better or worse if I did have more control of like, here's what I want. Here's the storyboard of exactly how this edit needs to go. Or here's the script. I don't know. I feel like that. I feel like because you are so talented at like editing videos, it would actually be bad for it. Yeah. I, I think the organic kind of nature that you bring to the table is like, you just, you don't kind of pre-prepare too much. And that way you're, you're not trying to follow each line of a script and I, people can come off really dead in that in that way but when you just approach each moment like what's the most interesting thing i can say or point out in this in this moment i think i think that translates well into the into the final edit so there's another tip for those aspiring youtubers we just asked, run like, and gun. what could you do just <laughs> be authentic be yeah. real and if if you're able to be authentic and real by having a script and having like a storyboard great that's fantastic i would guess that most people aren't most people it's like in the moment 
you are, you just, you see what you see and you react to it, especially like for Lincoln, like he's not going to fake it. And mm -hmm. he, he could feature, so that's why I try to like show him the blurred money, for example, when we filmed the blurred money video, I didn't show him the blurred money first, just like on camera, I yeah. showed it to him. And sometimes his response, it's like, oh, he was like, that's weird, weird. <laughs> I'm like, oh, that's kind of negative the way he's saying that, but he's, at least he's being honest with it's it. It's an honest reaction, yeah. Yeah. People can weird. tell when you're being honest. Yeah. Yeah. So I try, that's, I, I don't know if anybody that wants to be a YouTuber, like try to be authentic and real versus being perfect, just have good, but real versus like perfect. Everything said perfectly. And, and even when I mess up things and I say things wrong, like, or the fo focus is wrong, Jason does a good job at like pointing it out even more. So like people know, <laughs> I noticed that I'm a dum dum. If it's funny, if it's funny, I'll point it out. Yeah, if it's funny. The autofocus fail in the golf video recently. <laughs> oh man, we're at TaylorMade. I have these fancy cameras. This is a camcorder, I guess, for those of you that are watching on the video, this is our camcorder, Sony AX53 that I've used forever. We have these Sony A7S III DSLR, fancy, whatever they are, super expensive cameras, like the best of the best. And the dynamic range is great, but then all of a sudden I'm filming at TaylorMade and I put my hand out. I like that shot. Casey Neistat did that shot originally where it's like you're holding the camera and, and you're pointing gesture. it out yeah. as if as if they're you. Mm -hmm. I remember seeing him doing that like five years ago and I'm like, that's really interesting how he points things out with his fingers with the camera here. But the focus on that, it would focus on my hand and you couldn't see Tiger Woods on the thing or Lincoln's name. Yeah. You couldn't see it. So you just kept putting autofocus fail. We had so many comments about that. They're like, you guys, you need to get a new camera. Your camera is garbage. <laughs> it was pretty dim in that room though, wasn't it? It was a little dim, but these cameras can handle it. The yeah. night mode, like filming outside when we did the Tesla. Okay. There's yeah. a question for you. We did the Tesla sleeping in my Tesla video. Mm -hmm. And that was a really fun video. <laughs> I filmed it all with the fancy new cameras. If I, my Sony camcorder is terrible with dark light but this one is so good like it actually looked like the sky was blue when really it was like nighttime it's really weird how did you do that edit you're like do you have a time lapse from your security cameras no i don't got one so you took like a short clip and you made it look like the stars were circulating that off was of after glass. effects yeah <laughs> sleeping in my tesla this is kind of fun We had so many people point that out that just basically thought it was real. And they're like, that time lapse is amazing. It, it looked pretty real. And I, so I used a couple of tools to do that. One, one of them was um, this new tool called Google Earth Studio. It's what I've been using to do those cool yeah. Google Earth panning shots. And so I went to your house in Google Earth. And then there's this feature where you can set the time of day. And so I got the right angle and then the stars panning across the sky as they would have. And I just recorded that. <laughs> they would have been the actual stars. <laughs> yeah. So that's like, that's how it would have Next looked. Next level here. <laughs> and then I just used After Effects to, to mask out the, the ceiling of the car and plugged it in. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was the actual stars that went over on that exact night from the same time period. Yeah. Okay. So there you go. That's, and that's a question people always ask. They're like, do you use Final Cut Pro or do you use Premiere? All Adobe. Yep. All Adobe Premiere. Are Adobe. there things with Adobe Premiere that you're like, oh, I wish this was better? No. I mean, I've been using Adobe for years. And then when I, when I switched to Thomas Arts at the ad agency, I had to go to a Mac and learn Adobe on a Mac. So I wasn't using Final Cut. Yeah. But, um, but yeah, that was that was interesting. I I liked going back to the PC after that though. I bet it's made for a PC. It is not made for a Mac yeah. at all. Yeah, I tried doing Premiere and it was a nightmare. So that's my tip for you. If you're somebody that's a Mac person and you're just getting into making YouTube videos, time is of the essence. You don't want to spend a week editing a video. If you can edit in one day using iMovie or Final Cut Pro because it's like simple, deal with that versus like getting Premiere and spending a month learning how to do things. It was hard for me, but once you get Premiere, it sounds like from everybody I talked to, it's actually like easier to edit things versus Final Cut Pro. But yeah, I mean, Final Cut has a lot of really cool features um, that I started to learn right before I quit Thomas Arts, but I don't know. I'm just an Adobe guy, so I stick with what I know, and they keep upgrading it. Like, they just released an upgrade two days ago that makes a lot of the things I do faster. So like warp stabilizer and stuff goes a lot faster now yeah. and stuff like that. So it's just, especially having the creative cloud subscription, it just auto updates. I'm like, Oh cool. And because we're moving along, like we move quickly through projects. Like it's, it's great. Cause you send me a video and I edit it and when I'm done with it and you post it, I'm done. I can just yeah. move on to the next project. Gone. And my project files are so messy because of that. Like if I had to pass it off to somebody else, I would organize it 
so they could mm. understand it. But for me, I'm just like, get it done as fast as possible and, and get it, get it rendered and get it out the door. That's perfect. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. We take all of our files and put them in Google drive and that's been really cool to have like the backlog of them. Yeah. But before I would have like an external hard drive and I'd fill those things up and I just have to go through and delete all the footage, all the project files to make room for the next one. But it is nice to be like, Hey, it's live. We're good. Mm -hmm. We got the final version. I can just, set. I'm fine. I, can, I don't ever have to open that project again. Sometimes I do. And I do save them so that I can, if we have to. So you save the actual project file of like, basically the roadmap of it which all the, the, all the edits i've done yeah but if, if i clicked on any of the old ones they'd all have broken media i'd have to go through and relink everything but when i when i make a new asset i save it in the project file but all the footage i just delete because that's on drive i can just download it again hmm. all right so you just had a new baby mm -hmm. recently how old uh one month and 24 days Ooh, that's good yeah wife's gonna be like checking that out to see if it was right or not like come on jason you should have known exactly the day it was 23 days <laughs> um how's that been with two kids now versus one great <laughs> harder so like for us when we went from one kid to two kid it was like going from one to three it was like a lot harder because well she doesn't move different. yet so she doesn't. She's just a little... once she can start to crawl and they can go in different directions it'll be a little bit more confusing <laughs> she pretty much just sleeps most of the time yeah sleeps and poops and cries and just starting to smile so okay that makes it all worth it <laughs> that's good that's good well congrats on the babies that's yeah. two kids since you've been at what's inside yeah <laughs> crazy so that's two more than we've had since you've been what's inside <laughs> we got a dog that's about it yeah well that is i think that's a wrap on this podcast i thanks for coming down to all the way down to saint george yeah. um it's been amazing having you work for us like the videos are a hundred times thousand times better than when if i would have edited them and and you just do such a good job like i don't see how we could have anybody else edit at the same level oh, thanks, as you Dan. do so thank you i know this is like a small award it doesn't have your name on it the youtube gold play button and the letter but it's gonna uh, look awesome on my black walls yeah hope, oh that's true <laughs> hopefully it's something you get you like and think yeah. it's cool because it's as good of a present as i could get so <laughs> but it is pretty cool and uh yeah so let me know what you guys think about the podcast um give it i don't even know in the podcast world give it a like give it a share if you're somebody that's on youtube um feel free to like this video give a comment down below of some thoughts about jason's youtube tips and some of the history and some things that you'd want to know about our editing flow and different things that working for what's inside for next time i'd love to generate some questions for the next time we have jason on the podcast that you guys are interested in and then for the podcast platforms whether it's spotify apple not sure how this works go in there and give us a follow or a download so it automatically downloads the podcast when they come out and you can be the first to get them I think that supports the channel, but um, we're just here making some fun podcasts and interviews of behind the scenes. So stay tuned for the next one. Thanks for listening.